Hey y'all, hi. So we're doing a couple of things in today's video. I wanna try this cold girl makeup trend. I think it's so funny because it's like a play on words, like cool girl to cold girl. Like what's cooler than a cool girl, a cold girl. And I have been talking about this idea of cold girl makeup, like wind whipped cheeks, wind bitten cheeks, literally since the very seed, the very genesis of my YouTube channel. Years before, like before TikTok even existed, I invented cold girl makeup. So of course I had to try it. Back me up here, those of you who have been watching me that long. Back me up in the comments. I don't want anyone down there being like, who is this crazy bee claiming she invented cold girl makeup? It is true. But here's the other thing that's going on. I just finished decluttering my makeup collection. And so right before I went through my newly decluttered drawers to pick the makeup that I was going to wear and use for this video, I thought I should just film this and then it can be kind of like a shot my stash. I filmed myself going through my drawers and picking the makeup that I applied already to my face to prep and the makeup that I'm going to use to try to recreate the newly invented cold girl makeup trend. So in this video, you're going to see me going through my newly decluttered makeup collection and picking pieces of makeup and then you're going to see me applying that makeup to my face. I think it's going to be really fun. If this is your first time watching one of my videos and you like it, I hope you'll subscribe. My name is Hannah. I mostly make beauty content, but I try not to promote overspending on my channel. So making content where I go through my existing makeup collection and use my existing makeup rather than just talking about new makeup. That's the kind of thing I like to do here. And now let's do it. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So when I was shopping my newly decluttered, newly organized makeup stash to prepare for this video, the first thing I did was to open my middle drawer and to go through my complexion products. I decided to wear the YSL New Balm as a primer, my EXA Green Color Corrector, my Old Faithful, I wear that almost every day. That helps cancel a lot of my redness, but then to really even out and brighten my skin tone, I used a mix of the House Labs Triclone Foundation in the lightest shade, which is just pure white, and the RMS foundation in the lightest shade, which is a really great, truly neutral, desaturated pale olive. I grabbed my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer for spot concealing, and for powder, I actually dug out the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder from my box of makeup that I'm currently testing. This is a piece of Chantecaille makeup that was recently sent to me in PR. I also took my Patrick Ta Brow Gel and my Glossier Brow Flick Pencil out of that part of my drawer to do my brows. And I think that that was it for complexion. If I forgot anything, you'll see it in the B-roll footage, but I think that that is everything. So before proceeding to color cosmetics, I actually sat down at my vanity upstairs and put all of those products on my face. They're not really relevant to the cold girl aspect of the cold girl makeup look. They're kind of just like the base of the look. So I prepped myself for this video by putting them on my skin, but I wanted to show you the process of of shopping that part of my stash because that's really my most used makeup. And I also wanted to show you what is on my skin because you know, inquiring minds want to know. So that's the first part, the baseline. And now comes the fun part. I have read a couple of articles about what's being called cold girl makeup, even though again, I've had an idea in my mind for a long time of what this is, but I wanted to follow like what the magazines are saying a person is supposed to do to replicate this trend. And right off the bat, there's a bit of a departure from what I've talked about as being like cold girl cheek makeup. Because back in the day, I talked about like a raspberry, sort of like a gel stain, dark raspberry flush as being what I associate with like a cold looking cheek on me, almost a blue leaning magenta, the blue being sort of like a frosty quality. But that's not what Vogue.com says you're supposed to do if you're doing cold girl makeup. Everyone is is using like pink pink, like bright pink for cold girl makeup, which is actually good because I do occasionally dally these days in quite pink blush and I don't own any blue toned raspberry blush anymore. I just kept some of it around back in the day because of the cold girl fantasy, but I ultimately didn't ever like how it looked on me. So Vogue says the pink flush to the cheeks is always so beautiful in the colder months, says makeup artist Toby Henney. 
And this is interesting. It says start with a round of hydration. So it's talking about like making sure your skin is really plumped and hydrated first. And once you've done concealing and sculpting, which I have, I've done I've done all the sculpting I'm gonna do, which is none. Once you're done concealing and sculpting, using a cream blush brush, apply a pink rosy cream blush to the highest points of the cheekbone, blending upwards and a touch onto your nose, connecting both sides. I think they're talking about gloss all across, like blush all across, but just a little bit. And then it says you should concentrate color though subtly at the nose. I can't wait. And then they talk about dusting the cream blush with a bit of a powder blush to set it. But I didn't bring a powder blush. I just brought a bunch of cream blushes. Maybe we'll set with a powder highlight. So I picked out my kind of pinkiest blushes. And one of them is one that I've been using quite a bit to test. And I have loved it so much that I've already added it permanently to my drawer of personal makeup. But I don't think I've talked about it on camera yet. It's the Chantikai Cheek Jelly in the shade Happy. So I pulled that and I pulled Phytosurgeon's Simmer, which is this like lovely, strong, bright pink. And then on further thought, I also pulled Condensate, also a Phytosurgeon's cream blush. And it's in like a muted, kind of neutral, almost cool toned taupe. And I was just thinking if I feel like I need to take it in a bit more of like a cold gray direction, I want to have something that I can use to tone down the pink. But we'll start with pink. So I'm gonna go in with a Chantikai Cheek Gelée first because the reason that I've so fallen for this product is that it is really natural and it like, it truly becomes one with the skin. I don't usually like gel products for cheeks, but it's not really a gel. It's really like a cream that, like a watercolor stain, cream stain. And this is just, you know, not gonna be enough to complete the entire cold gray fantasy, but I feel like what I want is to cover a larger surface area with this more cream stain look, like all the way up. What did they say? Top of the cheekbones and blend up, but also across and also on a larger surface area on the nose. And then I can intensify with other things. Oh, I'm so cold and I'm, and I'm a girl. I'm such a cold girl. Okay, so this is like not intense enough to be the cold girl look, but I feel like it's provided like a base of more of a watercolory wash of this bright pink. I'm gonna go in with Simmer on top, which is a really, really pigmented formula and intensify the color in the center of these areas. So center of the top of the cheekbone, but I don't need to worry about diffusing it out across the whole area because I already have that thinner application, like connecting underneath my eyes. And the makeup artist said to concentrate color at the tip of the nose, but subtly. That's subtle, right? It'll become more subtle when I add some highlight. This tip of the nose moment is really what's giving us cold girl. And it's like, I am cold and I have a cold, you know? I feel like that illustration in a Kleenex commercial of someone who has a cold. Okay, that has really done it. And I actually don't think I want to add any of condensate. I think that that bright pink is it for me for cold girl makeup. I think that that's really doing it. And you know, maybe we'll add more at the end to balance things out, but let's move on from there. Okay, so so what it says next is the luminous aspect of the trend comes courtesy of a highlighter and they recommend an Ilia cream highlighting stick dotted on the center and tip of the nose as well as the cheekbones and Cupid's bow. So I actually didn't grab like a cream highlighter when I was up there and then right, I didn't show it in the footage when I was picking because I thought, you know, usually when I'm, I put a cream blush on like this, it ends up having a glowy quality just because it's a little bit glossy. But I think that I have to really do the most for this trend in terms of highlights. So I actually went back after I filmed the B-roll footage of me picking this stuff and I got my brand new e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek palette. This was a gift from a friend who bought a backup before it was discontinued and sent it to me and I haven't touched it yet. I feel like this is the occasion. So I'm gonna go into the highlight. This is a really great drugstore cream palette that has sadly been discontinued. But you know, any cream highlight will do. So I'm gonna go into the highlight and do, oh yeah, yeah. Center and tip of nose, cheekbones. Oh yeah, it's adding some glossiness and Cupid's bow. Yeah, that is that is very much more après ski than I was getting just from the blush. So I'm glad that I added that extra element, even though I forgot to shop my stash for it when I was actually in action. But the next step I picked lots of things for. So it says next, apply a sparkly off-white champagne or silvery eyeshadow to the inner corner of the eyes and the 
the center of the eyelids only for a frosted effect. So they are really not telling us to do the most in terms of eyeshadow here. Inner corner and center of the lids only. So I got the Lethal Cosmetics Liquid Eyeshadow in Bandwidth from my eyeshadow drawer, which is an extremely shiny, very, very wet look icy liquid highlighter. I also pulled out one of my Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, Moonlit Seduction, because it has a very reflective wet look powder version of an icy, shiny eyeshadow. And then for good measure, I threw in the Urban Decay Heavy Metals Glitter Eyeliner in case I ended up kind of creating more of an eye look, which I don't know yet if I'll do, in case I end up creating more of an eye look than the Vogue article is recommending. But I think I want to try doing just what they're recommending and see. I'm going to layer these first two products. So I'm starting with Lethal Bandwidth in the inner corner and center of the lid. Okay, I sort of put that all over the lids, but I feel like the Lethal one, the liquid one, is again, it's like the larger surface area being covered, like really sheared out. And now I'm going to go in with the powder and intensify in those two places. So center of the lid. And I'm actually just going to build up a tiny bit more of the Lethal Cosmetics liquid in my inner corner. It's easier to get it in there. And honestly, it's shinier. Okay, I usually don't like so much just pale, sparkly shadow all over my lids. That's the only thing that's there with no sculpting because I have hooded eyes. And so I'm usually trying to kind of create depth in that area, like make my lids look like they recede. Whereas adding lightness and brightness to them just makes them look like they come forward, like makes them look even sort of puffier and more hooded than they are. But I think I'm okay with it for this look, like the winky splinky little baby bird that just hatched kind of thing. I'm just actually going to stick with what they're saying, but I think I want to take some of the cream highlight from the e.l.f. palette like onto the brow bone on both sides to sort of wed the champagneiness of the e.l.f. highlight on the cheeks with the iciness of the lids. Yeah. And it doesn't say anything about mascara in the Vogue article, but I'm going to apply a tender coating of the Lash Pro type mascara from Make Beauty, which I pulled from the complexion part of my drawer because that's where I keep my mascaras as well. I keep like my most used makeup, the makeup that I use daily, no matter what I'm doing, all in one place. So I'm wiping it off and then like wiping it off on a tissue. This is the only mascara I ever do that with. It's so inky and so black that I have to do that to make it like reasonable. And I am going for sort of a wispy application today. I think just the top lashes. Yeah, that mascara, it's kind of barely there. You know what I mean? Especially compared to what I usually do. The glossiness is really making me feel this. Like that, my eyes don't look as flatteringly enhanced as usual. You know what I mean? It's just not doing the most for my eyes the way the usual application of eye makeup that I employ does. But I'm able to get behind it because of all of this like glossy, shiny blush and the way that those two things work together. So for lips, I pulled Maybelline Gone Grage in case I decide to lean into that sort of more taupe, actually turning a little bit blue skin look. Like I'm so cold that my lips are blue, which I could still do because this is like a bit of a deadening purplish gray on me. But I also pulled out, this is another Chantecai product that I recently tested in trying new makeup and I fell for it so hard. And it's really, really sparkly and shiny and pink. And I wasn't sure at the time like, which one of those two directions I wanted to go in. The Vogue article says that after you've applied your shiny eyeshadow to your lids, you should apply some of it to your lips as well before finishing with a glossy, icy swipe of some sort of shiny vinyl lipstick. So they're definitely going for like sparkle on the lips, sparkle and vinyl shine. And I feel like either one could work, but I'm really enjoying how much I've kind of gone for the snow bunny look. Like the actual trend rather than sort of my version of the trend. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit, just a little bit of Gone Grage on my lips, sort of to stain them as if I am getting a bit cold, you know, an actual cold girl. And I let that kind of blur outside my lip line a little bit. And now I'm going to put the Chantecai on top with all of its sparkly, glossy glory. There, I feel like cold girl has a touch of grunge that way. Whereas if I had applied the Chantecai straight, it would really be like 
like 100% snow bunny. And you know, I like to ground things a bit. So that is it. I don't know how cold I actually look. I actually feel like I look like I'm wearing a full face of shiny, kind of light glamour makeup. I think if I wanted to go for the true natural cold girl look, I wouldn't have put any makeup on my eyes, just like a little bit of mascara and really, really deepened the stain of the cheeks and the lips and maybe not the glossy highlight either. I feel like even though I like it and I'm glad that I added it, the glossiness of it is very clearly makeup. You know, really cold fleshed skin is sort of matte actually. Not like glossy like this because cold weather kind of sucks the moisture out of your skin. So there's that dry stained saturated lips, like color saturated lips and sort of dry stained color on the cheeks, which is more what I was talking about, I think, back in the day. This is definitely like the influencer version or like the TikTok makeup version, but I'm glad that I did it because it's a whole bunch of things that I don't normally do, especially the eyes is something that I don't normally do and wouldn't otherwise have done. So that's it. That's me shopping my newly decluttered and organized makeup collection for cold girl makeup and trying out the trend. I really enjoyed it. I think the main takeaway for me is going to be the cream highlight from the e.l.f. palette or the other couple of cream highlights that I have. I'd sort of moved away from cream highlight. I've just been having my cheeks be as glossy as they are based on whatever's underneath the makeup, you know? But this right here is like really floating my boat, really getting me excited. And that's why it's fun to do things like this, you know, reawaken your appreciation for an aspect of your existing makeup collection that you haven't really used in a while. Thank you for being here and spending this time with me. Again, uh, if you were planning on subscribing and you just have forgotten during the video, please go ahead and subscribe before you go. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.